Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. After the working cast has been mounted on an articulator, and before the abutment crown can be waxed up and surveyed, the final path of insertion and removal of the proposed partial denture must be not only determined, but preserved. The proposed path of insertion and removal was established during the preliminary survey and design of the diagnostic cast. Any tooth reduction or modification may necessitate a change of that path. The final path is determined by many factors. First, it must be parallel to any existing or prepared guide planes, such as the lingual of the molar. Next, the correct amount of retention must be determined on the existing or prepared teeth so the crown you make will be in harmony with them. A cast circumferential clasp will be utilized on the molar, and you must ensure that 20 thousandths of an inch of retentive undercut is available at the mesial buckle of that tooth. The cast should be tilted, always making sure the lingual guide plane is parallel until you have obtained the 20 thousandths of an inch retentive undercut. Then, all tooth and tissue undercuts around the arch must be examined and either eliminated or minimized as much as possible by tilting without losing either the guide plane or the retentive area. Once this final path of insertion is selected, the cast holder must be locked to hold the cast in that position. Inasmuch as the cast will have to be removed and relocated on the cast holder during the wax-up procedure, it becomes necessary to preserve this path. This position may be preserved by marking the size of the cast with orientation grooves by placing the analyzing rod against the posterior and sides of the cast while you cut a groove in the cast with a sharp instrument. Another method is to use a permanently secured metal rod in the base of the cast. With the cast still mounted in the correct position on the cast holder, drill a hole in the middle of the oral side of the base of the cast with a pear-shaped acrylic burr. This hole should be the full width of the burr, about 10 millimeters deep, and should be slightly undercut by rotating the burr in the base of the cast. An old straight handpiece burr, which has been cut to about 35 millimeters in length, should be inserted in the surveyor spindle holder and locked in place by the locking nut. Keep the end of the rod well above the hole you have drilled in the base of the cast. Lubricate the rod with some Vaseline. Now, fill the hole in the base of the cast with some Duralay by alternately sprinkling powder and liquid into the hole. While the Duralay is still wet and pliable, lower the surveyor spindle until the metal rod has been inserted deep into the wet Duralay. Allow this Duralay to set and dry for at least 10 minutes. Do not move the surveyor spindle, the rod, or the cast during this setting procedure. Your path of insertion and removal is now preserved. If you remove the cast from the surveyor table and want to return it in the same survey position, place the cast back on the surveyor table, insert the burr into the spindle holder, lock the burr in place, loosen the universal joint on the table, 
and carefully place the base of the table so it is flush with the base of the surveyor. Tighten the universal joint. When you release the burr, your cast is in the correct survey position for the path of insertion and removal. At this time, you should check your cast on the articulator to be sure the burr does not interfere with the opposing cast. If the burr does interfere, because it was lubricated, it can be fairly easily removed, stored in a safe place, and replaced in the cast when you have to replace the cast on the surveyor. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.